all right guys you're welcome back to my channel if this is your first time coming across my video you're welcome my name is stella all right so um kindly like subscribe and share just leave your comments in the comment section okay and i'll attend to all of them all right so today we're going to be drafting um this slightly fitted pencil um booboo kaftan or booboo dress okay with butterfly sleeves all right so um let's get to it now for the drafting um you first take your measurement from the center of your neckline to your elbow and for my client is 22 so we'll be adding 0 0.5 inch to that for the folding now i'm using this pattern this piece of fabric as my lining okay so we're going to be drafting both the front and the back piece together so the first thing to do is to measure that 22.5 inches and then we're dividing the pattern into two. So we'll call this side our front piece and the other side our back piece. So we'll go ahead and mark our basic gown pattern. Now her shoulder is 16 and 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we'll take, um, we'll mark that. Then um, the standard neckline is um, 3 by 3 for the front and 3 inches by 1 inch for the back. Now, but you can also get yours by doing your bust round divided by 12. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mark the 3 inches uh, neck width and 3 inches neck depth for the front. And then we are sloping the front by um, with 1 inch. So we'll do the same for the back. The back will mark um, 3 inches neck width and 1 inch neck depth. Then we also mark our shoulder, shoulder which is um, 8 inches. Now we'll connect uh, these lines. Okay, then we're also sloping the back with one inch. So we'll proceed um, with marking the armhole line. Now to get your armhole line is your bust round divided by six plus 1.5. And for my client, her own is eight. So plus the one inch slope that we had earlier used. So we're going to be marking nine inches. Now we'll go ahead and mark nine inches across. That's both on the front and on the back. Just so we're sure that we're working with a straight line. Now we'll go ahead and use a straight um, ruler to connect these lines. Okay, so we're done connecting that. Um, so we'll call that our chest line. Now let's go ahead and mark all our vertical measurements. Okay, so from her shoulder to her waist is 17.5. Remember you place your tape at that starting point and not on the shoulder slope. So placing your tape at the starting point, her shoulder from her shoulder to her waist is 17.5. Her shoulder to her hip is 26. Shoulder to knee is 35. And then the full length of the gown is 56. And then we're going to be using 1.5 inches as our hemming or folding allowance. Now we'll mark this, then we'll repeat the same at the other side. Remember that now we are marking on the front, so we'll repeat the same at the back, then we'll go ahead and connect with a straight line. So here we have it. Now um, let's go ahead and label the lines. Um, this is our chest line, waist, hip, and then our full length. Okay, now let's um, start our round measurements. On the chest line, we're going to mark her shoulder divided by 2 and her shoulder is 16. 16 divided by 2 is 8. So we'll mark that on the chest line of the front and then we connect to the shoulder marking that we have with um, a broken line. Now we're going to do the same at the back piece. Divide your shoulder into two. We'll mark that on the chest line. Then we'll connect that. Then we'll connect that to the shoulder divided by two mark that we have on the starting point with a broken line as well. Now on the chest line, we're going to mark her bust round divided by four and her bust round is 43. 43 divided by four, that's 10.75. So we'll mark that, then we're adding 0 0.5 inch as our ease, okay? So we'll mark the same on the back piece and then we'll mark the same on the front piece as well. So on the front piece, remember on the chest line, we're marking our bust round divided by 4, which is 10.75. Then we're also adding 0 0.5 inch as her is. Then we'll go ahead and mark the armhole line. Now, we'll measure the entire armhole line for the back. Then at the middle, you go in by 0 0.5. So then we're connecting with um, a straight line. Then finish up with a curve. This is for the back piece. So for the back piece, to eliminate the back bulge, we go in by 0 0.5. 
Now, the whole essence of this is instead of you measuring your across back, this 0.5 is we take care of that excess puff that usually comes at the back. Now, for the front, we measure the entire armhole line, which is 8. Then we take the middle, then um, you go in by 0.75, okay? Then we're also connecting with a straight line and a curve. Now, the curve is going to end at that point where we have half her bust round divided by four okay so you place your curve like that and then you connect okay so we'll go ahead and mark the rest of the round measurements now on her waist her waist round is 37 and 37 divided by four is 9.25 we also mark our 0.5 ease so that gives us 9.75 now on her hip her hip round is 44 44 divided by four is 11 we're also adding 0.5 ease as our um as our ease okay now on the knee length you're simply going to measure all you have on the hip length which um from has what we have there is 11.5 now we'll go ahead and minus 1.5 from that measurement okay and that will give us 10 so we'll mark so we'll mark our 10 inches on the knee line and on the full length also on the allowance then we'll go ahead and connect with a ruler okay Okay, and that's it for the front. We've marked our our chest line, our waist, hip, knee, and then our full length. Okay, so let's get to the back. Okay, so now for the back, remember that this is our chest line, waist, hip, knee, and then our full length. Okay, so um, to tighten the back, that's the first thing we're going to do. On the waistline, you mark 0 0.75, okay? Now, that 0 0.75 is to eliminate the back bulge. Now, to know the extent of where you're connecting it from, from your chest line to the neck depth at the back, you measure it and take the middle. And um, for this one, we have four. So we're connecting from that 0 0.75 inch mark on the waist to that point. Then we're also connecting from that waist um, 0 0.75 mark to the hip line, okay? So we'll go ahead and connect these points with a straight line. And now let's take her, her round measurements. Okay, so we had earlier marked her bust round. Remember that we marked her bust round 43 divided by 4, um, 10.75. Then we went ahead to add 0 0.5 inch ease. But when we were taking that back um, tightening, we took out 0.25 there. So we need to add it back just so the pattern does not short. So we we'll mark that. Then on her waist, her waist is 37 divided by 4. That's 9.25. Um, we're adding 0 0.5 inch as well, but in marking this we're going to start marking it after this 0 0.75 that we had taken out of the waistline Okay, so we'll place your tape after that 0 0.75 mark and then you mark your waist round divided by 4 plus um, 0 0.5 now We'll go ahead and mark her hip round as well. Hip round is 43 divided by 4 plus, sorry, her hip round is 44 divided by 4. That's 11 then plus 0 0.5. Okay, so to mark the, the knee measurement for the back, remember that when we're marking the knee measurement for the front, we went in by 1.5. We subtracted 1.5 from the hip um, round measurement, okay? Now for the back, what we're going to do is on that knee line we'll go back and measure all we have on her hip round and remember what we have there is 11.5 her actual hip round is 44 divided by 4 will give you 11 then we added 0 0.5 inch as our ease so what we have there is 11.5 we're going to mark the same 11.5 on her on her knee round okay now after we mark this 11.5 we are simply going to go in by 0 0.75 now in the front we took out complete 1.5 so for the back we're going to share that 1.5 into two which will give us 0 0.75 on each side so we're going to mark 0 0.75 in on that knee line both from the center back and from the side then we'll repeat the same on on her full length and on the allowance now 11.5 when you take out 1.5 that will give us um 10 so we are marking that 10 on the knee line and on the full length. Then we'll go ahead and connect with, um, with our ruler. We'll connect from our chest line to our waist, then from the waist to the hip, then from the hip to the knee. Then we're also going to connect from the knee to the full length and the allowance as well. 
Okay, so when I'm um, connecting the knee point, remember we are connecting that 0 0.75 we went in with from the side. Then from the center too, we are connecting to the 0 0.75 that we came in with as well. So we are connecting that to the hip line. Then we'll go ahead and use our um, straight ruler to connect to the full length and the allowance. Okay, so here we have it. Um, our basic gown pattern is ready. You can go ahead and add your dart, but I don't want that because the 0 0.5 inch that we took out from the center back will take care of the bulge. Now let's go into the alteration proper. Okay, so for the back neck depth, I want the neck depth to be um, 1.5. So I'll go ahead and mark that. Remember that we had earlier marked um, 1 inch, so I went down for that with 0 0.5. Now for the neck width, I, we had earlier marked 3 inches, but I want mine to be 4. So I went ahead and marked extra 1 inch on the neck width, okay? So we're going to go ahead and connect this. So here we have it for the back. Now for the front, um, I want my neck depth to be 4.5. So I'll go ahead. Remember, we had altered the neck width for the back to four to um four inches. So I'll go ahead and mark that four inches neck width by four point five neck depth. So we'll connect that with a curve. Okay, and that's it for the neckline alterations. Now the next thing we're going to do is to measure our sleeve length. Remember, I told us you measure from the center of your neckline to the elbow, and for my client is twenty two. So you're going to just place your ruler and then follow your initial shoulder slope, okay? Just follow it and mark it all the way down. Then we're going to measure her 22 inches. Then we'll add 0 0.5 inch allowance as well. That's for the folding. We'll do the same at the back. Place your tape, place your ruler on that shoulder um, slope. Just mark it straight down. you find out that the two of them, the two sh slopes, both the front and the back will definitely meet. Then you also add your 0 0.5 inch allowance. So on that slope, we are marking 22.5 inches um, on the slope. That's the sleeve length, okay? Okay, so there we have it for the, the slope, for the sleeve. Now, next thing for us to do is to connect the curves. But I don't want mine to start from the hip. You can start your curve from your waist, from your hip. But I want mine to start three inches below the, the hip line. So I'm going to measure, uh, place my tape on the hip line and come down by three inches. Then I'm going to connect my curve from there to go and meet the, sh the slope on the shoulder point. I'll do the same at the back as well. Go down from my hip by three inches, then connect my curve to go and meet the shoulder slope. Okay, and that's it for, for the curves. We're ready. Now, the next thing for us to do is to mark our allowance. So we'll go ahead and place um, our tape from the allowance, that's from the full length. Then we'll mark our one inch um, sewing allowance all the way to go and meet that three inches point that we came down with. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mark our one inch point all the way. Then we connect with a straight ruler to that three inches point that we came down with from the hip. Then we'll mark the same at the back as well. Then we'll also connect with a straight line to meet that three inches point. Okay, and that's it. We're done with the pattern drafting. Okay, so the next thing, the final thing we're doing is to add 0 0.5 inch um, join allowance on that shoulder slope. So we're going to use that to join the two shoulders together so we go ahead and mark it and connect with a straight line as well we'll mark 0 0.5 inch on the back piece and on the front piece as well as you see me doing so we'll mark it and connect and um and that's it so the only thing we're adding when it's time to transfer to fabric is just to add our zip allowance because um it was not included in this pattern so but every other thing is ready Okay, so we'll go ahead and, um, and cut out the front piece and the back piece as well.
Okay, so here we have it for the front is um, all cut out. Now let's go ahead and cut the back piece. Remember that we are cutting on our one inch sewing allowance, okay? And here we have it. We are done cutting the back piece as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut out our center back. <laughs> Okay, so this is it. We are done cutting out our patterns. This is the front piece and um, the back piece as well. Okay, so um, this is the back piece. So the next thing we are going to do is to mark our slit length. Okay, just so that when we are transferring to fabric, we will just um, move straight ahead. Now, for the slits, um, this, this gown is for a lady. And I'm very sure she will not want her slit to be that um, long. Now, so I want the slit length to be 18 inches. So um, from the knee line, I came down by 3 inches and marked my 18 inches. So when we transfer to fabric, we are also going to be transferring this mark also to our fabric. Okay, and that's okay. So we'll go ahead and transfer to our fabric. Now, this is the fabric we are going to be working with. Um, it's ABC wax, lovely. Now we are going to um, spread it, then place our patterns on it. Okay, so I've gone ahead to pin. Um, let's start the cutting with the back oh, piece. So I've pinned the back piece yeah. on the fabric. Remember that the fabric um, is on fold, but we are going to be cutting. Down. Now for the zip allowance, that the remaining that fabric that we have is. left is 0 0.75. So we're going to make do with that as our zip allowance. Okay, so we're going to mark that all the way from the neck depth down to the hem. Then we'll go ahead and cut. Okay, so we're cutting on the 0 0.75 mark that we have there at the center back. Then we'll follow um, the rest of the pattern and cut that out. Okay, so while cutting, ensure that you're cutting in between the, the chalk mark. Okay, just so that you don't um, reduce the, the allowance that we've added. All right, and um, that's it. We're done with the cutting for the back piece. So we're simply going to fold that away and keep. Then we'll bring the front piece, um, fold our fabric, pin down the pattern on it, and then we'll also go ahead and cut out the front piece as well. Okay, so here we have it, our front piece is ready we are done cutting out now remember that we cut out the front piece the fabric is still on fold but for the back the back is um, open at the center back now the next thing for us to do is to fold out our fabric and cut the facing okay so to do this you're simply going to get a piece one of those pieces that we had cut out so you um, you fold it into two um, this is for the front so we are cutting the facing for the center front now so you fold the piece of fabric into two and then pin down then um, you position your you place your your front piece on it ensuring that the both um, um, edges align okay then you pin down just to ensure that it doesn't move then we trace out the neckline and the shoulder slope as well So the next thing for us to do is to unpin. Now it's time for us to decide how, how wide we want the facing to be. For this one, I want it to be 6.25. So you just measure that um, um, round, okay? And then you cut out. Okay, so to cut the facing for the back is the same thing. Get a piece of fabric, fold in two, then um, pin the back uh, um, pattern on it. Then um, trace out, just mark same 6.25 round and then we cut out and that's it. That's it for the facing for the back. Okay, so we'll go ahead and um, fold the front fabric. Now this is on the right side because we need to mark on the right side, okay? So we fold it into two. Now it's time for us to take all our vertical measurements. 
um, because of the half inch that we added on the shoulder for the joining. So all her um, vertical lengths, we're going to be adding half inch to that. So we'll place your tape from the, from the neck. Then we're going to mark her chest line. Her chest line um, is nine inches, but we're marking 9.5 because of the half inch at that um, shoulder joining. Then we mark her, her waist length. Her waist length is 17.5, but we're marking 18. Um, her hip length is 26, so we're marking 26.5. Her knee length is 35, we're marking 35.5. Okay, then her full length is um, is 56, then plus the 1.5 inches folding allowance. Okay, then we also go ahead to mark her round measurements on those points, those vertical points that we just did now. So we'll go ahead on the chest line. We'll mark her chest round, we'll mark her bust round divided by 4 plus our 0 0.5 inch. Remember that her bust round is 43, so 43 divided by 4 plus 0 0.5, that will give us um, 11, that will give us 11.25, okay? Now we'll mark her waist round, her waist round is 37. And 37 divided by 4 plus 0 0.5 that will give us 9.75 okay remember the 0 0.5 is for our ease now we'll mark her hip round her hip round is 44 and um 44 divided by 4 that's 11 and um, we're also adding our 0 0.5 ease as well so we'll make all these marks remember we are marking on the right side with the with the front we're marking the front piece and the fabric is on the right side so we are marking on the right side okay now we make these marks and um we will stop at the hip round um marking then we'll go ahead and connect with a ruler okay so still on the same front piece on the right side we're also going to turn to the other side and then make all our vertical measurements We'll mark her chest line, her waist line, hip line, and then we'll also uh, mark the round measurements. So we're marking the, uh, the bust round divided by 4 plus the ease. We'll mark the waist round as well. Then we'll mark the hip round as well on the right side. Okay, this is so that when it's time for us to sew, the markings will be there already. And then when we're done with the sewing, we'll go ahead and clean these markings remember that we're marking on the right side okay so we'll go ahead and connect um, those lines with um, with our ruler and with our curve as well okay so here we have it we are done with our markings now I went ahead to cut out um, a piece um, this is velvet fabric so the width is two inches now I use the um, paper stay to stabilize it Remember that um, velvet does not frill, the edges does not frill, so there's no need to add um, your 0 0.5 inch for folding. Now, um, I notched the center, so we're simply going to use pin. But uh, um, before this, I used um, a pressing iron to iron the center of our front piece, just so that our crease line will be very visible. So um, we're going to go ahead to pin our velvet um, fabric on that crease line we're going to centralize the velvet on the crease line then we'll go ahead and sew the lines the edges the both sides okay we'll sew it and then I'll come back and show us okay so I've I've gone ahead to stitch the the two inches um, wide velvet fabric on the center piece okay so and I also went ahead to iron it so that it will be smooth now the next thing for us to do is to get our facing for the front that we had earlier cut. Now you get your facing, then we're placing, we're going to use it to turn the neckline, okay? So we're going to place it right sides facing each other. That's the right side of the fabric and the right side of the facing. They are going to face each other like so. Then we're sewing on the wrong side, okay? Now to turn the neckline, I want to use... um. 0 0.5 so you're going to mark 0 0.5 inch round the neckline then we're going to sew remember we're sewing only on the neckline and not on the shoulder just on the neckline so you can go ahead and mark your 0 0.5 round the neckline 
then you take it to the your sewing machine and then we sew around we sew around and then trim or you can notch then press down so that it will be flat then i'll come back and show us okay for the back um i've marked out our zip allowance which is 0.75 i marked it all the way down okay so i also went ahead to stitch on it so i've stitched on it but i want to show us i want to show us something now this is the zip i will be using so now this is the zip i will be using for this okay now I'm, i'll place my zip like this then make a mark just um, one inch before the end of the zip okay so now i went ahead to to run a loose stitch a loose stitch or a basting stitch um um from the beginning of this neckline to the one inch before the end of the zip so what we have here is a loose stitch to this point then we have a permanent stitch that's a very tight stitch from the end of this zip to where we marked remember when we, um, where we marked our our slit opening and we marked it here okay so we have a um a tight stitch from the end of this zip to this place where the slit is going to start then from here we have a loose stitch okay now the essence of this loose stitch here and here is for us to have um a crease line when we iron it open and then we cut out the loose stitch okay so i'm going to go ahead and then spread this and um and iron it open okay then take off the loose stitch the only thing we're going to do now is to go ahead and iron this zip allowance open then when i'm done ironing it open i'll fix my zip i'll iron it open fix my zip to the point i marked okay so i'll iron it open fix my zip to this point that i marked then i'll use my facing to turn the necklines okay just like we're going to do for the front remember i marked the zip um, side now i'm going to use my facing like this okay i'm going to use my facing like this to turn the neckline but i'll first fix the zip then i'll use my facings to turn the neckline like so okay remember we're only turning the neckline with 0 0.5 then we're leaving the shoulder for now until we're done now i'll do this and i'll show us okay so i fixed i've turned the the neckline <clears throat> okay so i've turned the neckline with the facing okay so let me also show us the back so this is the back I've turned the neckline with the facing and then I also ironed it so it will be flat. So I'm going to use hemming gum, just place here and then iron so it stays permanently, so it stops flying. Okay, so I'm done with the front piece. Now, um, the back piece as well, I have fixed the zip like I told us. So this is the back piece. This is the back piece. I fixed the zip. Okay. So I fixed the zip. Okay. So and I also I first fixed the zip, then I went ahead to use um, the facing to turn it. Let me show us the back. So I've turned. So I've turned the back, the back neckline only, only the neckline and the zip area, with the facing. Okay, so we're going to weave all these rough edges. Now the next thing for us to do is to is to join the shoulders. Okay. So we're going to we're going to zip the back. We're going to place it 
right size facing each other like so okay so this is the right side of the front now we're going to place the right side of the back facing each other like this so the wrong side is what is facing me okay the two right sides are facing each other now to do the shoulder we're going to pick up pick up one side like this then align you pick up remember that they are this way so you pick the two of them up then you open them so you open them up like so then you align the joinings okay ensure that the two lines meet then you use your pin okay then you ensure that the two lines meet then you use your pin and um, hold it firmly okay so when you hold you check ensure that the two lines are meeting i like to pin it up and down so that it remains um fixed okay it doesn't shift now remember we left 0 0.5 inch when we were cutting okay it's time for us to mark that 0 0.5 inch all the way okay so it's time for us to mark um 0 0.5 joining allowance that we left on the shoulder so we're going to place our tape and mark okay. so i've marked it now i'll go ahead and sew on it we're sewing from here to here okay then we'll do the same on this other side pick the two shoulders up Spread it wide open like this, ensuring that these joinings align. You secure with a pin. You mark your 0 0.5 and then you sew on it. And then I'll come back and show us. Okay, so I've turned the shoulders. You can see how smooth it's looking now. Okay, so I went ahead to press it so that it will be flat. And smooth now the next thing for us to do is to is to hem the sleeve part okay so I went ahead to cut out my bias okay because um, you need to cut the fabric on bias so that you can still maintain the stretch now I'm going to use it to fold the edges. Okay, so I'm going to use it now to fold the the edges of of this side. Now I'm going to fold uh, starting from these three inches we came down with. So I'm going to fold all the way and then stop here as well. I'll do the same for the other side. Then I'll show us what next to do. Okay, so we're done. Okay, so I'm done um, folding the sides, okay? I've folded the both sides, the both sides, okay? Um, so I went ahead also to press. Now it's time for us to finish up this side, okay? Remember we left um, one inch allowance when we were cutting. Now it's time for us to mark. Let's mark that one inch. Okay, so this is it. We've connected. Now, this is the point where the curve started. Okay, so we need to curve this side. We're not going to leave it straight. Okay, we need to curve it. So that it blends well now what we're going to do is simply okay 
okay so i'm going to start sewing from this very tip so all the way to the end okay so i'm going to okay so i'm going to start sewing from this very tip here okay then i'll follow the curve i'll follow the curve and sew it all the way to the hem i'll do the same on the other side remember we are sewing this on the wrong side okay the pencil part is on the wrong side so we are sewing this i turned it to the wrong side you can see the rough edges okay you can see the rough edges so this is on the wrong side now we are sewing just this down part we're following this curve from this very tip all the way down we do the same on the other side and then i'll press it open then we'll turn it to the right side so we'll finish up okay so i'm done i'm done um stitching the sides okay so i've done both sides and i went ahead to press okay you may need to give it a little notch inside so that this side can relax and that is what i did now the next thing for us to do is to come back and mark on our lines remember our, our markings on the right side okay now we're going to come and stitch what we have here this is our our chest line so we're stitching from the chest line um all the way down to the hip okay just make sure that your your curve um your hip curve ends this point okay now we're going to do the same thing here we're going to do the same thing here so you may have to reshape you may have to reshape um this curve just to ensure that it ends here okay so that when you wear it this place will not be um, a bit puffy okay so let's reshape if you can do this with your free hand is also okay okay then when i'm done i'll clean up all these lines because this is the right side of the fabric okay so i'm going to be sewing here okay you can also cross check your measurements remember i told us that her hip is 44 and 44 because now the fabric is um, open is no longer on fold so 44 divided by 2 that's 22 and we added one inch um okay so this is what we have and remember that this is not the original hip line because we came down from the hip line by three inches so you should be taking your measurement from here okay and <clears throat> This is what we have okay so that will show you that you're still on track now we'll go ahead and stitch from here to this point and um, from this chest line to this point then i will see us so after the stitching um let's not make the video longer so after the stitching we'll go ahead and hem remember that our our slits our slit is still closed i like to leave it closed till i'm done with the sides and the other measurements then we'll come back and open up our slit open the slit then remember we left 1.5 inches here as our hemming allowance then we'll use it to just fold and um, hem okay and that's it to be a wrap so i'll go ahead um sew on these marked lines hem the down and um, open the slits okay i'll open the slits then i'll also hem the slits as well because we can't leave it this way okay you can weave you can weave the rough edges then use your hemming gum to just iron it down or you can just go ahead and fold you can go ahead and fold the um the slit allowance and then stitch on it with a matching color so i'll do that and i'll show us a final look on the mannequin 
all right guys so here we have it um is this not looking beautiful i went ahead to wear it on the mannequin and the fitting is just lovely i can't wait for my client to wear it okay so um if you've watched this video to this point kindly subscribe subscribe i beg okay <laughs> so subscribe like and share you know just um drop your comments any question any observation any area you want me to explain or throw more light i'll gladly do that okay and um kindly put on your notification bell just so that you'll be notified once i upload a new video and that's it guys that's a wrap um thank you thank you thank you thank you for watching and i'll see you in my subsequent videos bye